chance to get a taste of Hollywood. That's because the River Run International Film Festival is screening the best of everything. And joining us now is renowned actress, producer and educator Diane Baker. She played the role of April Morrison in the best of everything. Thank you for being with us this morning. And we do want to note this was at the beginning of your career. So how was that film important to your career development as a whole? Well, I was a contract player at 20th Century Fox and uh, started in Diary and then Journey to the Center of the Earth. And then the third film was the best of everything. And uh, I tested for it and uh, got the part. Uh, they were very supportive of contract players and were looking for roles for the actors. And I was very privileged. It, I, I think about it at night sometimes because it's been oh, 70 years. And I, 68 some years, and now I've looked back on my life. And I think, how lucky you were, Diane, <laughs> to have had this sudden thing, you know, this luck of being under contract and being uh, shepherded and guided. So many wonderful mentors, especially on that film, they were wonderful. Hopi, Hope Lang, with, and you know, uh, sadly, several, most of them have gone now. And so, uh, I feel like I'm an elder part of that film at this moment because they're gone and here I am holding the back, so to speak. Um, it was a privilege to work with pros, professionals. I learned from every film I have ever been in about professionalism, about being on time, uh, never being late, um, only sick once or twice on a movie, two movies, um, but still worked if I had could, even with miserable colds and so on. <laughs> so I learned, I learned from every one of those stars. Yeah, you're talking about a film that debuted in 1959 and featured a number of newcomers that included yourself and, and, and actresses like Joan Crawford. So how was it she working? She was a newcomer? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, well, to, to you and to a lot of people. Um, <laughs> how was it working with those? How did that really influence your career, having that experience at such a young age? Well, as, as I just said, I learned from every single person that I worked with. Uh, Hope was nervous, a uh, nervous kitten throughout. And, um, and I, you know, I found myself at that age being very supportive of people who were vulnerable. I remember, as I was saying to, well, uh, the wonderful executive director of the River Run Film Fest right here, Rob Davis, uh, right a few minutes ago that Joan had just lost Alfred Steele, her husband. And she was very, very sad and very, very, I mean, often you'd see her weep crying. And she was trying to come, uh, make a comeback in Best of Everything after years of not working. So it was to watch her on the set once. A, I wasn't on the set every day that other people were working. We all worked together and I only had one bare, vague scene with her. So it wasn't as if I worked with her and learned from working with her. But I saw her so down, and so I would stand off camera behind Jean Negalesco, the director, and I would try to give her a thumbs up that she was going to be able to get through the scene. Because she, you know, he was having a hard time mm -hmm. uh, pulling her out of her, you know, her unhappiness. So that was my one experience on that with Joan. I didn't really get to know her, um, but evidently she saw something in me watching, her, hearing about me or watching the movie or seeing me work that she uh, must have had something to do. I'm not sure. I think Bill Castle for uh, the other film I did with her, Straight Jacket, um, but she was a professional. These were people who you didn't, all those great people were professional. They didn't play around like some of them do today <laughs> looking for you know, going rushing to the phone when they read the trade papers to see someone's making more money than them and they're on the phone with their agent uh, while they're shooting. I mean, you know, or going off to play golf um, right as soon as their scene is finished. And you're stuck with the, with the script supervisor doing your lines off camera. So, Days have changed to some extent. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Yeah, Diane, you've worked with today's top talent as we kind of just discussed in some of your more recent films like The Cable Guy, <laughs> The Net, The Joy Luck Club, and The Silence of the Limbs. So how do you find those big productions um, compared to maybe some of the major films at the beginning of your career? Like how has it evolved, I guess you would say? 
Well, it has evolved. Um, I'm not so sure exactly in what way it's evolved, except it's all expedience. It's all. I hate to say that I, I'm an, I want the art to survive. And I use the term arts because it is an art form. And um, too many people that began to run the studios that came in while I was even at Fox, you know, a lawyer ran the studio for a while, and then a businessman came into Paramount. And I remember Bob Redford coming to my apartment one day, uh, called me and said, can I come over? And he said, I'm trying to get downhill racer made, and I have to use my money. I'm going to Europe to say I'll be interested in their movie. They pay my way so I can get footage of the, of the Olympics, of the behind the scenes. I'm using every penny I can find. <laughs> because Charlie Blue Darn was the head of, now new head of Paramount. And so I said, well, you, you have a good project, so why don't you go? And he said, I had to get the footage in the can and bring it back on my own and try to convince them to let me make this movie. And it's Bob Redford and he's been in, starring in films. So I, I think today actors are now smart and they are actually directing and producing their own books. And I'm not sure, I don't know yet if that's a great thing or not, but it's allowing actors to express themselves in more than one thing. I was asked by my agent years ago, are you an actress or a producer? And I said, can't I be both? Hmm. Both. I want to produce and I want to act. <laughs> I want to do, you know, I want to be in charge of my career. I don't want to sit by a phone and wait for someone to call me and say they like me or they're not going to use me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can get along with my life. I can do other things. I can scrub floors. I have no problem. One of my students recently came over. Uh, she gra I talked her in. She graduated with an MFA at the Academy of Art, where I was running both schools, acting and film, for 15 years recently. And uh, I flew back and forth every week to L.A. and went back to San Francisco to teach and during the week and then flew home. And um, here's, here's, I asked her, she just took off for North Carolina. She's American Indian, half Indian. She's now got her townhouse with her brother was the chief of the Cherokee Nation and he lost his, um, he didn't, he ran again and didn't get it. I said, Jay Lynn, what, what were you doing when you were studying in LA at the film, New York Film Academy? She said, I was cleaning houses. <laughs> I worked with the family. I had to go and say goodbye to all of them because that's what I was doing. I cleaned houses and made enough money to keep going and doing my, my wow. work. All right, Dan, Diane, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. And it's so nice to hear about your career. You can see the best of everything tomorrow at 7 p.m. at the University of North Carolina's Main Theater. That is located on South Main Street. Tickets are $12 each, and you can purchase those online at riverrunfilm.com.